welcome back so in the last section we have seen the default flow of the spring security we have we have play with around some methods like uh, how to protect the api how to uh, invoke or how to allow all the api to be accessed so we have play around this like deny all permit all some api should be denied some api should be you know permitted or, or authenticated so we have seen all this scenario now it's very necessary and mandatory to understand the basic flow or internal flow of the applications till now we have not written any code related to the flow or i mean we have not added any custom logic in the spring security flow right so it's very necessary to first understand which main actors or main classes participate in the default flow of the spring security right okay so uh, we can go here if you see on this uh, slide so i have listed on all the steps like how this is happening so let me explain this so whenever any any api that you want to secure for the first time so first is check whether this api is already accessed by this user or not if it is not accessed then it will return the user to the login page we have seen this in the browser right if any api when we, are, we when we are hitting the for the first time in the browser it is showing me the login page where i have to enter my credentials right if uh, once i logged in it means it is it it is uh, suppose that you already have your session which is active and valid so it is not asking the user id and password every time right so first step is that when we are trying to access the secure page for the first time it will return you to the second step that is nothing but a login page okay now actually how this is happening so when you try to access one api so it goes to the authorization filter and an authorization filter and default login page generating filter identify that user is not logged in and redirect the user to the login page so this is what is happening in step number 1 and step number 2 so we know that it's a set of filters which is behind the scene in the spring security so let's uh, let's go through this filter first so i'll open that filter so this is the authorization filter which is available in the interceptor of the spring security so interceptor we know that if any request is coming for it will intercept that request so what is actually doing what is response what is responsibility of this filter is that first it check whether the url that is x that is asked for that is hit in the browser or that is user is looking to access so first check whether it this is uh, i mean this is the authenticated endpoint or permit all kind of endpoint endpoint right so this is where it is configured it is configured in our default security page you remember that right so if you go down you'll find one method that is called do filter what is do filter is doing is do filter is just asking the authorization manager to check this user whether it is authorized or not right if it is not authorized then we do something if it is authorized then we will allow the access right so this line line number 95 you see this just check ki this endpoint is a secured endpoint or public endpoint right so if it is if this manager is is checking that endpoint if it is found that this is the this endpoint is a secured endpoint then it will then it will check whether it is authorized or not it is first time user is hitting this endpoint or uh, after the first first point so if this one is not if if a flow is not coming in this it means go to the next chain okay we will see this how authentic authorization manager doing these things so we believe that the endpoint that is hit by the user is the secured endpoint right so in the flow now the next the fil next filter that is coming in a picture that is default login page generating filter okay so i will simply search so this is the class default login page generating filter so if you remember when we are trying to access any any uh, secured url so there was one pop up is coming that is asking for the user id and password so who is generating that page right so this page is generated by 
this uh, filter if you see here generate login form page html so this is nothing but the html part is written in the java and that is getting displayed over there right so this is the this code is if you see here there are many if conditions whether it's a OAuth 2 login enabled as a simple form based login enables we are talking about this one right we are, it's a form based so form is coming from this particular block so if you see there are many many uh, you know kind of uh, login is enabled like saml2 oauth2 right so this is how behind the scene default login page generating the login page remember we this filter will comes in picture when you are trying to access the secured url right so till now the login page is displayed to the user now after that login once the login page is displayed so user will now enter as the login credentials okay so that will be username and the password whether you are taking the password from the console it's fine or you are taking from the property files in our case we are reading this from the property file so next filter that is comes in picture let me close this first form.xml is not required so that will be username password authentication filter username password authentication filter username password authentication filter dot java right i'll open this so let's go down if you see here there is one method called attempt authentication so this is the main method which is get executed in the flow what what is the main work of this method is that whatever request object that is coming it used to extract the username and password that we have entered you can see here obtain username obtain password okay so once this uh, you know username password it is there then it it will going to send this to the authentication manager okay okay so one more thing that we can see here the final response that we are getting is auth request that is a type of username password authentication token but if you remember in the slide or if i go um so if you see here when any request is coming it used to show the authentication object right so i'll go to that flow first if you remember in the previous slide we have discussed that right so whenever any username password uh, extracted from the user so it this that particular object is called authentication object okay authentication object so from where it is coming now okay let's see that so if you open this class you find that this class is extending this abstract authentication token right so if you open this again you see here this is implementing the authentication object right so we know that in java we can convert the class object of type of the interface since it is an interface we cannot create the object of it so finally it is creating the object in this format username password authentication token right and this request or this object is getting passed to the authentication manager to authenticate this object right so till now hope you are getting the points like how this uh, you know dots are connected to each other so here you, so here you see uh, we are calling the authenticate method of the get authentication manager again so this authentication manager in interface and we are having many implementation of this manager so the one implementation that is coming in picture is called provider manager so provider manager right if you see here this provider manager let's go down is implementing this authentication manager right so inside this provider manager we are having one method that is called authenticate right this was the method which was getting called in the filter so now if you see it's very simple class for what it will check it will check what about the provider we are having which provider is implementing this right so you see here there is one for loop and this get provider method is finding all the provider that is present in this security 
स्प्रिंग सिक्योरिटी वर्जन सो दिस प्रोवाइडर मैनेजर वे इज गोइंग टू आस्क ऑल द ऑथेंटिकेशन प्रोवाइडर मैनेजर दैट इज अवेलेबल इट मे बी द सिस्टम आई मीन मे बी द डिफॉल्ट वन इट मे बी द यूजर क्रिएटेड इट मे बी द कस्टम वन ऑल्सो सो इट विल लिस्ट ऑल एंड इट विल जस्ट ट्राई टू सी इन दिस ब्लॉक एक्चुअली विच वन इज गोइंग टू ऑथेंटिकेट दिस यूजर एंड सपोज देर आर टेन ऑफ टेन प्रोवाइडर्स ऑथेंटिकेशन प्रोवाइडर इज देयर सो इफ सपोज थर्ड वन इज एबल टू ऑथेंटिकेट दिस यूजर देन रेस्ट देन दैट लूप विल बी ब्रेक ओके एंड रेस्ट विल नॉट बी चेक अंटिल इफ इट इज नॉट कमिंग देन इट विल कंटिन्यू दिस लूप विल बी कंटिन्यू अंटिल ऑल द प्रोवाइडर्स गेट एजुकेटेड राइट सो दिस इज वॉट दिस मेथड इज डूइंग सो इन केस ऑफ फेल्योर if suppose there are um, a series of you know um, authentication provider if one is failed so in in that case it will check the next one it if second is also not able to authenticate then it will check the third one so it will move unless and until it will find the correct one okay and we are going to build our own authentication provider so don't worry we are going to implement this all these things with with all of us together and we'll see like so once the once the provider that is support to test this so it will once it will finding then it will ask to the authenticate the user if result is not equal to null means you are getting some result it means this, this will this is the particular authentication provider it is going to work for me and it will break the loop right otherwise it will throw the exception in the last so in our case what will happen since we are we are just following the default implementation so there is one one default provider authentication provider that is dao authentication provider that will be going to work for us since we are using the default implementation so that's why we know that the dao uh, the dao authentication provider will work for us if suppose it is a custom authentication provider we have written so that authentication will be running in the background okay so let me open that class dao provider okay let me open that so if you go to this abstract class so in this abstract class you find it is all the logic written over there authenticate method right so what it is doing we are getting the username and once we get the username then we are retrieving the username right so this is the retrieve method and if you see this retrieve method this is the retrieve method that is written in the abstract query detail okay and if you see the implementation of this method let me copy this first in the dao authentication provider here you see the core logic that is finally written in the dao authentication provider right so it's simply since we are getting the username from the authentication provider abstract authentication provider and we are passing this to detail user detail service to load this user here actually you are loading the user okay so this call may be go to the database or this call may be may go to the some property file right in our case we are reading the, reading the username and password from the property file okay not from the database so that will internally handle this right so this is the beauty of you know spring security how these things are so smoothly working in this right so here you see ultimately it is going to call the user detail service if you remember the ppt every authentication provider manager has to call this dao authentication provider and that is having the load user by username so this may be in memory user detail it may be some property or it may be the some database right so this is how this implementation is get supported to the provider manager so once you, you you find out the exact dao authentication provider exact pro authentication provider that you are looking for so that will internally call the user service detail method uh, user, user sorry uh, user detail service class which is having the method of load user by username so from there you get the username uh, whatever data that is coming if you see here 
whatever data is coming first check whether it's null or not if it is available then we it means that the user is present right so this is how uh, it is actually working since in our case our user is not coming from db so it will be a in memory authentication so there is one class for that or manager for that that is in memory user detail manager so let me open that class in memory user details manager dot java right let me open that so if you see this class is implementing the user detail manager and what we saw it here we are calling this loaded manager this coming from this service right and this service is nothing but we are implementing this manager using this service okay so if you see here in memory user detail service and there is one method which is creating the object of it so you see all the methods are there whether user is existing you want to change password then this class will comes in a picture update password load user by username this is what is i am looking for right so once you get the user so now from here you are returning the exact user password or user object you can say right this is same as if you remember uh, in our property file let me open that when you store this user and password and your application starts at that time this data get created in the in memory okay at that time it is not going to read from the property file it will be reading from the in memory detail manager right so this uh, this uh, this in memory user detail responsibility is having the all the user to be saved in the in memory which is available unless until the server is running right so if i go load user by username method so if you find here it is getting the user based on the username it is getting the user from the this dot user right so from where it is coming so this user is nothing but if you open it it will show you the one hash map and this user is getting is having the data that you have created in the application dot property file right so this query actually return the values from that only okay so this is all about this let's see deeper side now so once we are getting the user data from this it's getting returning as the user object to the authentic DAO authentication provider right and the data then retrieve then return from this to abstract provider abstract user detail provider okay so finally we we, get, we have got the user data user detail object right if you see one more method in this uh, let me open that mm, it will be here somewhere this user detail we are retrieving this data this is for then we are getting this uh, where it was it is here only right this method authenticate method so if you see here once this check is done then we are calling one more method additional authentication check right so if we open this method and if you see the implementation of this method in the in our provider manager because provider manager is implementing this right user detail manager and uh, if you DAO authentication provider I think it is implementing this abstract right if I try to find out this method uh, what was the name of this method authentication additional authentication check right? let me copy this if you see here this method is there this will check it is now taking the current password and this check the password check right like you know we have i have added the password ravi one you remember that right 
so there may be a case your password that is stored in the db maybe is uh, you know encrypted format it is having some algorithm a bcrypt password encoder some kind of en encoder which is keeping that uh, password as an encoded format in the database so that you that details so when is once you get the credentials and the password that is coming as a part of authentication object and when you try to match the db password and the password that is coming from the db and the password that is coming from the front end or from the form so it has to be matched right so first what will you do i will simply first you have to encode this password right if you see here password encoder dot matches means whatever password is coming in the as a user detail object i mean from the property file and the password that is that is coming as a object okay so that gets matched if any password encoder is there if that doesn't match it means that some problem over there since password doesn't match the store value right so this is one additional check so hope uh, this flow is very much clear now if you go through this video again and again so it this will become a i mean killer picture so if you're doing this first time so this classes may be confusing but it's very easy once you got this and uh, don't worry we are going to talk about this password encoder we we have a separate lecture on that like what are the algorithm that are available in the spring boot how to encode the password i mean how to config this you know, encoders in the spring security we'll see that so this is all about this uh, theoretical you uh, know explanation so once we are object is getting authenticated so it will return to back to the front end and uh, front end i mean the form and if it is authenticated then it will uh, it will allow you to access the api otherwise it will show you the form okay so this is all about the theoretical flow how this flow is going on over this look there are many classes that is participating in this flow but i have i tried to explain the most important you know actors or most important classes or interfaces which are coming in coming into picture while this flow is going on okay so in the next section i am planning to debug these things so what i'll do i will simply put the password and i will try to debug these classes together with you okay so let's do that in the next session until then bye